Hey folks, Dave Parrish here at Knack Builders. Uh, today's video, I'm going to talk about how to make invoices in a Knack app. It takes a specific uh, uh, object or data structure to do those correctly. And I'm just going to go over the process of how to do it. And actually, the structure for invoices, you have an invoice to which you can add many items. So one, typical one-to-many type of structure that can be applied in a lot of things. Uh, I just did another app with uh, classes uh, in a school and very similar structure. You have a class called something, uh, certain dates, whatever. Uh, that would sort of be like the invoice. And then to that class, you're going to add students. Um, and students would sort of be like the products you're selling. So again, one to many. This is useful. Uh, first time I was doing it, I didn't really know what I was doing. Uh, and I finally figured it out. And it really helps. Uh, and invoices are, are real or invoices or orders, POs, whatever. They're all the same. Uh, very useful. I'll be back in a minute. Thanks. Okay, I'm back. Uh, Dave Parrish at Knack Builders going to be talking about um, how to make invoices in a Knack app. Let's jump in. That is, let's call it an app. Okay, um, I'm going to go through the data structure, the tables you need, um, and how they're related to one another. Uh, first, clients. This would be clients, customers, or whatever. You're going to have a list of those. Typical stuff, their name and phone number. This one's an easy one. Every order is going to have a client. And then each client can create an order or an invoice. Um, so you're going to grab what I call the boilerplate or native stuff about the order or the invoice which actually has not much to do with what they're actually purchasing. That's going to be different. You're just going to want to know, okay, the client, you know, typical stuff, an order number, invoice number, uh, client name, the date of it. Uh, in this case, we're actually tracking inventory too. I'll, I'll touch on that, but that's a whole other topic. Uh, products are coming from certain locations. Uh, in this case, I do an account connection, which ends up grabbing whoever created the invoice. So you have that. This is counting the number of things they purchased. It's also summing each thing that is on the invoice. So you get a total. Uh, it's basic stuff. Okay. And then I'm going to jump down to this one. Items. These would be the products you're selling. This is important. And I'm going to spend a little bit of time on difference of, of what a product is and what when that product appears on an invoice. Those are actually two different things. Uh, so a product would be typical. You got a product number, description, what its cost is. Uh, that is, you know, largely, in this case, these products, they're distributing different sort of hygiene products. So we got you know, the name of the product, item number. We can have an active or inactive status on these. So when you're choosing what products to put on an invoice, you could filter it by only ones that you're currently selling because you don't want to get rid of those. What a cost is, um, that type of stuff. Okay. Now here's the important one. I call it in-out items because we're actually tracking inventory on all this too. Some apps... We just created an inventory or an invoice for what was sold and to be charged, and you can even have them pay for it with that uh, e-commerce function. Uh, in this case, we're tracking inventory too, and um, so <clears throat> when I do inventory, I usually have one main table that is looking. Okay, what's coming in? 
meaning we're resupplying what's coming out, we're selling. Um, and also when you're doing inventory, you want to give them an ability to do a manual update, to do a physical inventory. It's off of what the system says for whatever reason, and they adjust that on their own. But when you're doing an invoice, again, you're going to be, you have a client, you're going to say, I'll show you the interface, but you're going to say, okay, let's create a new order for this client. Date, it's going to capture who the client is, um, whatever boilerplate information you want about it. Then you're going to add items to it. But what you're actually not doing, you're not actually adding an item in terms of the data here to it. You're adding an instance of that item. Um, and I'll show you how that works. Because an item is what it is. It's a, the name, part number, current value. You know, those are some of the main things. But when you're applying it to an order, there's other variable information. Uh, one could be quantity. Uh, so you need to be able to capture that. You may have a discount structure. You have an item that has a current value, but maybe your salesperson has the ability to adjust that. Well, that's going to be a variable for an instance of that product. Um, so <clears throat> it's important to understand that concept. An item is just an item. When you're selling it, it is an instance of you selling that item and adding it to the to the uh, to the invoice or order. Let's see what we have here. So obviously client order, a new order will have a connection to the client. That's the main one. Um, items don't, don't need an instant to the client because they're, they're separate. But an instance of that item going out, these are the line items on the invoice. We're going to it's going to be automatically connected to the order. We're going to grab who the client is. In this case, we're doing this inventory volume by location. Um, and then an instance of this item is um, you're going to you're going to in the instance or the in out. You're going to connect that to the item. So in this case, I'll get into this. If you're selling some particular product bathroom cleaner product number whatever you're going to select that and then you're going to put the volume or the quantity and other type stuff so absorb that let's go over to the pages side and see how this actually works i'm on the builder but you'll get the deal so in this case you'd log in you'd go to a client you look at that client and then you'd say, hey, okay, here's, here's all this client's orders. So we're going to create a new order for that client. You're going to add in, see what this looks for. Um, again, date, comments, and the location. Very basic stuff. Now let's go to the details of that. Um, Here's the order, you know, all the boilerplate stuff up top. Let's add a new item. In this case, we're going to, this connects back to the item or the list of products you have. And you're going to select which one. You're going to put in the quantity and put in whatever comments you have. And let's see what's driving some of these rules. Record rules are important here. So when I add that item to the particular um, invoice, I want to capture a bunch of other information about it. I want it native in this uh, in out or line item to the order. I want to grab who the client is, in this case the location, the date, and is it, for inventory purposes, is it coming in or out? This type of time point. and it's an order and this one's important too I've seen uh, apps where the cost of the line item 
they create an equation that links directly to the cost or the price of the item itself. Um, now that seems like it might work. Let's just, whatever that item costs, let's make the line item of that item when it's sold the cost of that item. Well, that really doesn't work. Um, that can be a variable because over time, it is most likely that value will change. So you do not want to link it directly to it because how that would work in practice is over time, if an item changed, the invoice from before the change would, its value would change too. So you go look up to an old invoice, uh, you've updated pricing, that invoice would be wrong. It won't reflect what was actually sold. What you'd rather do is you're going to have that field, it's a uh, value currency field, and you're going to say, hey, when I create this line item, I want to go look at the current cost of that product, and I want to grab it and insert it as the value. I don't want to link it. I just want to go get it, put it in there. So if the price changed the next day, that value would be the same. It would not change. That's an important uh, part, part to look at here. Um, that's largely it. And I'm, I'm going to recap that a little bit here. You're going to have your client. That's easy. The client has an order. Basic stuff, boilerplate, order number, uh, invoice number, um, date. You're going to have a list of your products. Now, sometimes there isn't a list of products. You're selling one-off things. Uh, in that case, you wouldn't need a list. Every line item would sort of be unique. But most of the time, you're going to be drawing from some pool of products that you're selling. And then each product, each time you sell one of those products, you're not actually selling the item itself. You technically are selling an instance of that item, and you're capturing variable information about it. Price um, and quantity are the large ones. So that's it, folks. Hope that was helpful. Uh, appreciate your time. Thanks. Hey, I know I said I just was finished with that, but after looking at the video, I wanted to clarify one thing. That's the direction of these connections. Uh, client, uh, or actually client order. I mean, client and client order are related, but the connection is right here. And you're usually, the connection is um, in the direction of the child. So a client and a client order is the child. Client order is client to the child. That means the connection will reside in the child. So, so when you're looking at the records, I might have a whole other video on this. Uh, the name of the client is appears in the child which is the client order um, but that's a pretty easy one um, and this would be similar in this direction in out items the instances of an item is a child of items so I, so we look over here we have um, items we see that it's connected to the in out items but the connection resides in the in out right here. So it's one to many. One item can have many instances of it being sold. Let's go to the. Um, find it here. Item right here. These will all look the same. Um, each instance of this item connects with one item, and each item connects with many. Make sure they're set up like that. What that allows you is you can look at any item. And you say you had a list of all your items, and you want to click down and see the details. It's going to show you all the times it was sold. And you do that in the other direction, too. You can look. I mean, that same thing happens. You can look at the order, obviously, and you see all the items on it. You can also look at the client and see all the, everything they bought, not just all their orders, but rather every single item directly because they're all going to be connected back and forth. I just wanted to clarify that um, when you do your connection, you're going to initiate the connection from the child, um, the one-to-many. If one 
Again, I always think of one to many. One many. One client has many orders. One item has many times it can be sold. Initiate it from the child's thing, and which more specifically means that's where you're going to see the name of the connection. Go back to here. Here's the item. The instance of it being sold, you see it in the child record, which is there. It's going to lead back to the parent. That's it. Hopefully that helped. Thanks.